This week's episode is the next installment in the best G.I. Joe figure accessories, so stick around. friends and welcome to this week's episode of Days of Dorker Past. My name's Rob and in this episode we're going to continue our look at the best G.I. Joe figures with accessories. This time around we're going to take a look at the year 1987. 1987 was a big year for G.I. Joe. It was the year that G.I. Joe the movie was released and it was also the tipping point for a lot of fans. A lot of people saw it as a ushering in of a new era, an era that they weren't the most happy with. But I think some of the best figures, personally, were released in 1987, and we're going to take a look at some of them and their accessories. Number one on the list is my absolute favorite G.I. Joe figure ever, and that's Chuckles. What makes Chuckles' accessories awesome weren't really what they were. He only came with a pistol, but what makes his accessories the best was the shoulder holster that it came with. To me, that was something that I'd never seen before in the G.I. Joe line, and unfortunately we hadn't seen anything like that after that character was released. It was something so simple, but it spoke volumes. Based on Miami Vice, slightly, Chuckles was a intelligence officer and like a DEA agent of sorts. So the shoulder holster really harkened to that era of like Miami Vice and other undercover cops at the time. And I thought that was truly awesome. Now, yes, I'm a little biased with him being my favorite character, but you got to admit, that was a really cool accessory. Number two on the list is Crazy Legs. Crazy Legs came with a submachine gun with a fold-out stock. That was pretty cool. But what was really the best was his parachute that he came with. It wasn't an operational parachute like we'd seen in the past with some figures. But it was a very rubbery type of parachute that really had to be wound around his legs. Kind of like a real parachute would be with its harness. That was awesome, and it was something that you could actually slap on some of your other Joe figures that they could always have a parachute when they're in a bind. Number three is Falcon. The character of Falcon in the comics and the toy is awesome. The cartoon, eh. I think we'll never forgive him because of what he let happen to Duke. You should be able to forgive the toy because of the awesome accessories it came with. He came with a great combat shotgun, kind of in a sawed-off style. And what was really the icing on the cake was his backpack with a knife holster in it. The backpack also came with an antenna, but that knife, perfection. Number four on the list is another one of my favorites, and that's Fast Draw. Being a mobile missile specialist, Fastdraw came with a very unique weapon that, I mean, starts to borderline on the bat-crazy happenings that G.I. Joe got into after 1987. But it was just so awesome. What Fastdraw came with was a backpack missile launcher. And I know that probably doesn't sound as impressive as it really was. He came with a blast shield for his helmet, with a cool oxygen hose, and he also came with two remote controls that went to a backpack with two movable missiles that could be taken off. Couple that with his great quilted ballistic armor, awesomeness. Pure awesomeness. Number five on the list, Law and Order. Law, an MP officer, kind of replaced Mutt when it came to the dog specialist of G.I. Joe. As a canine unit MP officer, Order was an awesomely painted German Shepherd. You could tell exactly what he was and he was awesomely made and painted. Law with his white MP's helmet, a leash for Order, 
He also came with a police's baton, which I also used as a tafona for any of my ninja characters. But he also came with a great Uzi. So any character that comes with an Uzi gets extra points. Because Snake Eyes came with an Uzi. Let's get real. Next on the list is Outback. What a great character. A simple but great design. His accessories included an H&K rifle. That was great. Which was great because you could sling it over. He also came with a great backpack and web belting that slung around him. But what really pushed this character into awesome accessory territory is his flashlight. The flashlight was a great accessory that clipped onto his leg, and it's just a great flashlight. One of the other characters on the list has flashlights, but, well, let's get to him right now, and that's Tunnel Rat. Based on Larry Hama himself, Tunnel Rat was a great character. Definitely one of my favorites. Everything from the camo to his face, his outfit, and his accessories. Labeled as Explosive Ordnance Disposal, Tunnel Rat had some of the best gear. He had an awesome machine gun, a huge backpack, and, and two flashlights that went into the backpack. He also came with a satchel that could work with any character and was truly awesome. Tunnel Rat is definitely one of the greatest. Now we start talking about Cobra. And let me kick things off with an honorable mention, and that would be Big Boa. The story behind Big Boa is that he's the boxing instructor for Cobra. Now, there was also going to be a boxing expert for G.I. Joe, and that was going to be Rocky Balboa. But due to Sylvester Stallone selling his rights to Coleco for the Rambo toys, there was a deterioration of communication, and the Rocky Balboa figure was never made. But Big Boa remained. Now, the accessories he comes with that are really neat are his boxing gloves and like a speed bag of sorts that says Joe written on it. He didn't come with any guns, any knives, any swords, any explosives, just boxing gloves and a punching bag that says Joe. I mean, that's pretty cool. That guy's confident if that is all he needs on the battlefield. So let's get back to the list. And the first Cobra that we'll throw in for the best accessories is Crocmaster. And I think you know why. Because he came with a giant crocodile. He came with a leash, a crocodile, and a whip. And that's all he needed. Great style to the character, great design, and a crocodile, which was made great. It was a great mold, great toy. Dude. I don't need to say anything else. Now, I've really shied away from vehicle drivers on these lists, but I just couldn't for this guy. The next Cobra on the list is the Ice Viper. Ice Viper was the driver of the Wolf, which was the Cobra Snow Vehicle. And what helped reinforce that was the double size he came with. He came with a great helmet and two sides that kind of fit into little sheaths on his legs. I don't think I ever really had him piloting the wolf. I always threw some other Cobra in there because I always used him as like an Arctic Ninja. I mean, I was down with TMNT at that time, so to have size like Raphael for G.I. Joe, I mean, that was awesome. That was perfection. And I have to apologize. I probably used the words, that's awesome, too many times in these lists, but I have no other words to describe how great these things were and how great they make me feel to this day. Number 10 and the next member of Cobra with the best accessories was the Techno Viper. Again, with a lot of these figures, he had a great design, a great purple color scheme, but the accessories. He came with a backpack that had three different attachments that clipped onto it. He had a wrench, a claw, and a sledgehammer. Coupled that with what is described as a plasma rifle. Here I say it again. Just awesome. Just awesome. Now he was what was a, as the Techno Vipers were, were the mechanics on the battlefield for Cobra. They were out fixing the his tanks and probably the claws when they crash landed. 
and that was awesome. That's just a neat little character to be a member of the motor pool, to be a mechanic, and to look that awesome. And to have a plasma rifle. Now number 11 and the last entry on this list is probably one of the more controversial because of, he's a member of Cobra La, and that's Nemesis Enforcer. What accessories make him the best? Well, first off, he comes with awesome bat wings and tentacles. Now, I've heard that the tentacles were supposed to be like one of the bioorganic traps that you can put it into somebody's backpack hole and wrap them around like they're trapped in it. I never used it like that. I didn't know that's what it was supposed to be. I just put it on people and made them monsters, you know, that they had cool tentacles coming out and could attack people. The bat wings, I mean, how awesome is it to have a monster figure on G.I. Joe that could fly? Now, he was pretty cool in the movie. Probably one of the standout neat parts of it because of how awesome he was. He has a great backstory that because they're immortal that he helped start the myth of vampires because of flying through the night and abducting people. Those were just great accessories to have because it being backpack hole you could just throw them on anybody. Heck you could have Roadblock have bat wings and attack people and knock the crap out of people. But the tentacles, great. You could throw them on anybody that they were mutated by a cobra secret chemical or use it like the trap like it apparently was intended for. Anyway, those are my choices for the best accessories of 1987. Next month we'll be tackling 1988, so come back for that. And if you like this video, hit the like. If you want to see more great episodes like this, subscribe. And hit the little bell to be notified whenever there's a new episode. And please leave a comment. If I'm far off base, let me know. If you agree, let me know. I love talking to you guys. I love responding back. I love the stuff you all have to say. So please, comment, like, subscribe. Until next time, my name is Rob. This has been Days of Dorker Past. So keep being rad, stay dorky, peace out! Yeah.